welcome to the Private Property Farming Podcast. My name is Mbali Nwoko and this is another special edition of the gardening series with home growers. And today we're going to be doing a live demonstration with the roll-up farm and just to show you how you could fill it up using compost or potting soil and start growing your own food at home. Cass, thank you so much for hosting us once again. So today it's all about the roll-up farm. Just explain to us what is the roll-up farm and the concept behind it. Bali, absolutely my pleasure. It is so fantastic <laughs> to have you here again. Yeah. This roll-up farm is something very, very special. Okay. I'll tell you why. So now if you look at it, you'll see it's flat and there's a reason for it. And the why we say a roll-up farm is when you get it, it's actually rolled up and it's and it's easy and it's done, done that for easy transportation. Okay. So you get it up as, as a as a roll-up bag. Right. And hence the name the roll-up roll farm. So you you roll unroll the farm and you have this bag. But I'm gonna go through the motions and the technical components around what makes this bag so special. First it's made from a UV protected material. Okay. It's got all the stitched reinforcements absolutely everywhere. So it's quite strong, it's very yeah. Very strong, very sturdy. It's going to last a very, very long time and it's going to give you some of the most incredible vegetables and herbs and berry bushes. You'll see some of the strawberries already have over there. Nice. Because those strawberries are going, you know, I'll teach you a trick in terms of how to get the best of your strawberries. Great. And they are going to work well in the roll up bomb. Now, what you'll note as well, and I'll show you towards the light here, you'll see there's little holes yes. inside the uh, roll up bomb. And the reason yes. for that, and they're, they're all over. Yes. And the reason for that is once you've prepared your roll up farm with all your veg and you put all your soils in, remember you've got your potting mix and you've got your composting. We use the two, we blend it all together, and you get a nice uh, concentration of the two inside the bag. So mm. you've got a nice release of nutrients going back into the plants that are able to grow and sustain themselves. Now, okay. when you water, the water is slowly released out of this bag into the ground. So the bag holds a lot of moisture, which is what you want. Yes. So you don't have to water as often as you would if it were to have been typically in a pot or in soil. Now this is a very, very special bag for people that are living in environments where there's very little space mm -hmm. or their gardens right on the other end of the property or outside the courtyard or on their patio or on their, on their apartment. So they've got a nice patio overlooking a park or whatever it would be. Yeah. You can actually dress it up quite nicely. And I was showing you earlier when I was put a, a picture of one of our customers who's actually taken one and they've yeah. put paving bricks around it and they've made this look so special which is what you can do you can be so creative but I think what we need to do is we need mm. to start this and we're going to prepare the soils I'm going to introduce Gift now Gift's <laughs> my right hand man yeah he helps me with absolutely everything and when you see the magic at home growers and you see how well everything is growing we say thank you to Gift. Awesome. Uh, because Gift is our man of the moment and he is going to help us. And we're going to prepare. We're going to cut open the two bags and we're going to blend in the potting mix and the composting. And we're going to strategically put in a variety of different seedlings that we got. And remember, we only use the edibles, so you're going to have a wonderful variety. And as we go through it, I'm going to go through each one and explain to you, you know, what's been put in yeah. and the purpose for it. And when we plant them, we put them in a very particular order because the different seedlings or vegetables grow at a different, different Right. Yes. So we got to do it very cleverly. Right. So for example, we'll put tomatoes and we'll go through it as well. And we like to be able to prop up the tomatoes at some stage, either with a bamboo stick or some type of mechanism to hold it up. But then as that is part of the process, we just need to know where we put it. But I'm going to start with the strawberries as well. Okay. I'm going to show you where to put the strawberries. And the strawberries will always be put on the corner or the sides so the fruit can hang over the edges so the fruit doesn't grow in the soil, doesn't pick up bacteria, yeah. and the strawberries don't rot. But before we fill up the bags, I know that these bags come in different sizes. Yes. So just explain to us what size bag is this one, as opposed to the one that we have in front there. Fantastic. So this particular size bag is the one meter one. Okay. And the one in the front there, which yeah. we already put some of the soil in just to set it up, um, is the one and a half meter version. Okay. And they're technically designed in a very similar to the same way. They've both got their supporting straps with yeah. Velcro on them. And the reason for that is that okay. you adjust the, the Velcro and the strap onto it just to hold it up and just give it some firm holding yes. until the soil's compacted and it's held itself well into position for easy and healthy growth. They're Fantastic. both identical. And the one thing which worked out very well, which you'll see on that one and this one here, if you hold this like that, okay. you see, if you imagine soil inside here, you've got different zones. So you can already this position where you're going to yeah. plant. So you've already got 
uh, predetermined zones to put in your veg and your herbs and uh, your, your berry bushes. You can put and you can put the plants in different groups Absolutely. as it is. Okay. Absolutely. So Great. Special, special, special stuff. And one, one of the others that we've got growing, which is our first one that we set up a while ago, we've got beautiful, beautiful sweet potatoes growing. And the sweet potatoes grow and they thrive in here. I've got one going at home, which has got magnificent cucumbers for me. <laughs> and that's what I want to see. And this is where the magic is, because yeah. if you're able to grow those kind of vegetables in a small environment, mm. you're going to get maximum results. Right. So should we get gifting? Let's get gift. Gift, please uh, join us and let's go through the process in setting up this magnificent roll-up form. Right. So we have gift here. What's the first step, Cass, in getting this set up now? Okay, so let's take it one step back and so we unpack the roll-up form from its packaging. Okay. And we now start the process by removing the Velcro straps. Okay. And the reason for that is that we're going to now start filling it with a beautiful mix of potting mix and composting okay. which is really about getting this all prepared well into uh, getting the seedlings into the mix and we can get a beautiful display of magnificent herbs and vegetables growing in our roll-up form awesome quite excited so i see gift has compost here now okay so what gift's going to be doing is putting the compost in and you'll see there's there's bigger pieces chunkier yeah. pieces in the soil load itself and so we're going to take a, a mix of composting. You can feel the texture. Lovely. It's, it's a lot chunkier than that of a potting mix. Okay. And there's a, there's a couple of reasons as to why we, we do this. And it's, it's, very about, it's very much for, let's just get that in. So what's the difference between compost, compost mix and potting soil? Okay, so the, you, you feel the texture, yeah. the texture in the potting mix, which I just got in now, it's a lot finer. Um, there's, a lot, there's more soil in, inside it in terms okay. of its composition. Your composting is made from chunkier pieces. So a lot of wood chips, um, bigger pieces that would come from the rehabilitation of, of garden refuse. And the process is about getting it into an organic state where it starts to decompose and it's bigger, chunkier pieces, which allows you to have decent form. So if I squeeze that and I hold it, you'll see you've got a decent blend of nice, hard, strong pieces of bark and mm. other wood fillings. Um, and you can see this one now, you can see the rich color. It's a darker, darker color to that of your potting mix. Yeah. The potting mix has almost got like a brownish color to it. And the composting the compost is, is darker. more correct and it's full of nutrients. Right, so Gift just put about three bags. So it was first compost, then potting mix, and then compost. Correct. So when a person buys this roll-up farm, three bags go into this specific size. So what we typically do is on the one meter one, we normally okay. put two and two. Two bags compost, two bags potting mix. Right. Right now we've got three, and you can see there's still a bit of capacity. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the next one in, and then we're gonna put the straps up. Um, so that's the purpose. Now if you see the straps, there's a reason for it, so... And is there a strategy behind compost, potting mix, or no, can you just, just mix, mix it, it all? As long as you mix it in, to okay. give it a fair representation in terms of what's in the Ooh. load. And again, you can see the difference in the color. It's yes. not as dark as that of the compost. Yeah. So it's a very, very, very different uh, color and texture itself. And I've covered that strap, which we'll take out. There we go. So once wow. we've got this in place, we're then going to just knock it together, we're going to push it down, compact it quite well and hard into the uh, roll-up form itself. Okay. So then it becomes easier for us just to then position those seedling plugs into this. And then what we're going to do is to have a bit of delight in our garden, you can see it's already holding the form, to, form together. Yes. Um, you'll, we're going to end up putting the strawberries in the corners. And the trick here, and it's a really special way of growing and, and planting your strawberries, mm. is to put your strawberries on pot where the fruit hangs over. Because you don't want the fruit to grow in the soil. Yeah. Because there's bacteria, and you don't want bacteria to grow onto the fruit itself. Right. And you'll see these are all flowering as well. Okay. These are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful strawberries. strawberries. And you can see we had a couple of little red wigglers here because some beautiful insects as well already. So you don't organic. plant the strawberries with the bags? The no, bags no. don't decompose? No, not at all. So you okay. must remove those okay. and uh, put them directly in. So we're going to start that process now. Okay. Um, so we'll start digging into the corners there. So let's get this done. So we'll okay. open these up a bit. 
Okay, so that's that's a nice size hole that you've dug. Okay. And that will go in there, and then we just fill up the soil, and then we can get the rest done. And then what we'll do is we'll use a spray bottle afterwards, just to give the mix a nice soaking and a bit of hydration, so that we have a decent offering of water onto these seedlings and these beautiful, beautiful strawberries. And in a couple of weeks' time, you won't believe the difference in how this is going to look. It's going to look lovely. totally, totally spectacular. And we have very, very different offering to that as what you're seeing right now. I mean, the last time you and I met and you looked at that, that roller farm that we had set up, it was very, very uh, sparse in terms of its um, uh, variety of what was growing. Now, if you have a look at it, there's almost no soil to be seen. Everything's green. It's just an abundance green. of green growth. So that is what is special about it. And one thing which I don't like about these plastic bags, and you'll see, for example, so it holds a lot of water and water doesn't drip through yeah. uh, effectively. Although there are some holes there, you can see how this is clayed out. And what happens is if you don't get decent drainage, you'll end up getting aggressive root rot. Yeah. Now with the roller farm, you don't have that because you've got strategic holes all at the bottom it, and the water slowly seeps out. Mm. So you don't have that. And then if you see this, this is very clay compared to this. So you're not going to get the problems of water logging in the root system, which is going to cause root rot. So this is the best way to do it, the healthiest way to do it. And your seedlings and your your strawberries are going to have an absolute fantastic time in terms of their growth. So we'll pop that forward. You'll see we've hung all the strawberries forward, so they're all out on the front of the grove of the roller pond. In their different blocks yes, as absolutely. well. Absolutely, all in their different little blocks. So now what we're going to do, Gift, you're going to take out some of those plugs there for us, and we are going to now position different vegetables in different parts of this roller pond. So, so the purpose of the strawberries, they have to be at the edge so that the, the, the strawberries could hang, right? So there are a couple of techniques around why we do it that way. Okay. One is that it's certainly, that's beautiful, that's time. Um, what happens is your, your vegetables, that, so your strawberries that grow are easily accessible to, to be able to harvest. Okay. Now think about it, if you have them in the middle as well, if it wasn't an issue with the, the, the strawberries growing into the soil and picking up bacteria, once you've got a decent canopy of tomatoes growing and you've got thyme and you've got parsley and you've got beetroots and you've got tomatoes, to try and get to those strawberries is impossible. Yes. So, and they're not going to flourish. By putting them out the way you've done now, you are going to get the best strawberries that you'll ever believe. Looking so, forward to it. So, so before Gift starts planting, yes. maybe just tell us what we're planting. So this is That's a thyme. That's common thyme. Thyme uh, seedling. And this is well. a... That's a beautiful tomato. That particular tomato variety is called the Money Maker. Beautiful, beautiful plum red tomatoes. Okay. Absolutely special. And now, these are your... Chives. Those are garlic chives. Beautiful garlic chives. And we've got some beautiful lettuces. And those are there. Those are um, basil. That's a purple basil. Oh, wow. Beautiful variety. And the nice this thing is about the basil, you've got your different red oak and green oak. Um, and then you've got your parsleys. And then you've got your beetroots. That's your parsley. Yeah. And then also, once they start, and they, they, they find their form sense that you're going to get, the mm. color that you're going to get. They're going to be bursting with absolute flavor and vigor. When you see these things growing, it is going to transform whatever garden area you never had before, whether it's on your patio, whether it's outside your kitchen, yeah. wherever you decide, this is going to be revolutionary. Right. It's going to be a very, very special place. So what's our strategy in planting? We've got the strawberries at the corners, That's right. um, different crops and different herbs. So. So um, tomato, do we put it per group in one block? So no, so you can do that in certain elements, like if you're going to do carrots, for example, okay. highly recommended you do that. But what we're going to try and do here, we're going to take the tomatoes and we're going to put them towards the ends over here. So okay. we're going to try and get them towards the ends of the bag. And the reason being is that if you're going to need support for them, because remember, tomatoes can grow incredibly high. Um, you've got to put something in to support them. So you might take some bamboo sticks, put those in, which is going to support that beautiful, beautiful bush. And there's a lot of tricks. There's a lot of magnificent tricks to get the finest tomatoes growing out of a tomato bush, which I'll explain to you another time. You cannot believe what you can do. It's, mm. it's literally like making magic, <laughs> on your, whether it's in your garden, whether it's in a roll-up farm, where, where, no matter where it is. Yeah. I'll teach you a trick. So let's get planting. Okay, so let's get those going. So we're going to put those out. So it's a very simple thing. We're going to just dig a little hole there. Okay. We're going to pop these in. Okay, we're going to just give them a bit of uh, space to, to grow because they are going to grow 
incredibly well and just remember what you want to do is you want to achieve by way of giving them the capacity to have support using whether it's going to be bamboo sticks or some metal frame or, uh, or, or whatever you create. Okay. So we got that and then... The and rest. these ones could go? So those can go anywhere. I mean, those oh, really right. don't make a difference. Uh, these are going to be nice just to give some nice um, colour in terms of, or not colour, but the greenage in terms of little strands coming through of beautiful, yes. beautiful, beautiful, beautiful uh, chives. So close. for a person who's buying this um, roll-up farm and they have no idea uh, where to plant and how to plant, would Home Grow as a system just to show them, you know, how to start uh, separating the different plants uh, based on their different groups so that it could grow optimally in this farm? Absolutely. Okay. We have a seven-day uh, support line. Uh, on WhatsApp as well. So, okay. you know, those that make contact with us, we walk them through the process. Okay. They get all the support seven days a week on WhatsApp or telephonically. It doesn't make a difference. We're there to support and help those that want to start growing and having a vibrant, vibrant uh, roll up farm in their, on their property. Awesome. So, we can now, you see, we really dress this up. There's a lot of green. There's spectacular green happening. And, um, yeah, and, and also the one thing which I must stress as well, you know, when you plant any herb or vegetable for that matter, there's no guarantee that every single one of them are going to take. That is you correct. You will get a degree of failure, so don't be alarmed. Um, you know, you must understand that the plant has gone through a significant amount of shock, and as a result of that, oh, they do struggle and do suffer. Now, okay. what makes it very, very interesting when you start using organic soils, your probability of having natural worms or worms inside the soil to keep the soil balanced in terms of nutrients, you've got a good chance of there already being worms in these bags, red wigglers, um, and there's obviously other varieties as well, and they will basically munch away on the composting pieces and convert that into a nutritious food source for the plants. And these plants are gonna thrive. Yeah. You come back in a couple of weeks time and you take a snapshot view now, and we see exactly what we have today versus what we can have in a few weeks' time. That's going to be, it's going to be magnificent. Great! Um, I feel like we have no more space left. No, we left. don't. We've actually over-consumed, <laughs> which yes. is fine. So I think, gift, you can take those babies away, and we'll use them somewhere else. So after planting, fantastic. this looks fantastic, really very colourful, and quite spacious. And then I suppose then we bring the water. Yeah, so now we've got this. Uh, again, what you do is we have these, these heads that we put onto an old cola bottle and uh, you pump it up, it creates pressure inside the bottle. The nozzle allows you to adjust so you can get your misting. Oh, and wow. And then you just literally spray around and uh, you hydrate all your vegetables. And what's important about using a spray head or a spray bottle with a misting unit on it is that it doesn't damage the finer vegetables that you planted. Because yes. if you take a hose pipe, and a lot of people don't realize, they take this hose pipe and they're in full blast and they're blasting it, and you've got mud shooting everywhere, and yeah. you've got uh, damage to your poor little seedlings that you've just planted. But doing it this way, you're causing absolutely no damage whatsoever. And that is the secret, and the secret to success when it comes to growing beautiful vegetables, herbs, berry bushes, strawberries, whatever you decide, you have that option in terms of your roll-up farm. And although we're talking roll-up farms today, we um, take the same methodology. We apply it to anything that we do around the house. This is just a mechanism to get you mm. a different product or produce output. Right, so my last question for, uh, for, for the show and uh, specifically for this roll-up farm is then, once you've put in the water, you know, where do we put this balcony outside and do you just you know, water every once a week and just wait for the crops to grow? That's right. So the one thing which we recommend people to do is I always say use the finger test, just take your fingers, just plug, plow it into the soil and you'll feel the depth and where the moisture is. If it's dry, water it. Don't ever let it dry out. Mm. Um, as I said before, the magic around this bag is that it controls the amount of water that it lets out. Mm. So you're not losing a fortune of water. So it's a great water uh, management system, water harvesting process involved to keep this, this whole system, because it's a system, mm. I like to refer to it as a system, to keep the system hydrated and healthy. And you'll see in a couple of weeks time, you will not believe the difference is what you have here. Yeah. This is gonna be mind blowing. And we're gonna take photographs and we're gonna look back and we're gonna say, now I can't believe this is what we were doing 
X weeks ago. Yeah. This is really special stuff. Looking forward to it, Cass. Thank you so much for hosting us once again today and explaining the concept around the roll-up farm. So I suppose, yeah, let's continue to take pictures of the growth and let's see, you know, what, what beautiful vegetable garden we could um, uncover from this. Fantastic. I look forward to that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for watching the gardening series today. And we just did a demonstration of the roll-up farm. And we're going to be taking pictures and sharing them with you just to see the progress of these beautiful vegetables and herbs um, throughout the coming weeks. So come on through to Home Growers, get your own roll-up farm, buy your own seedlings, ride share at Home Growers, and they have a 24-hour support line through WhatsApp just to assist you in how to plant um, where to plant the plants and um, the different crops that you could buy and grow in your own roll-up farm. Please do share some videos and photos of your own farm using the roll-up farm. And remember to tag us. That's it for me, Mbali Noko, and I'll see you on Thursday at 8 p.m.